Hello, hey. I'm making this for an English project, but hey, at least it gives me an excuse to post on my YouTube, which I haven't posted in a while. I I ignore the time gap. Ugh. Anyways, leading to the video. We all know what animation is. To bring a drawing to life. The talent that brings us productions like The Amazing Digital Circus, Hell of a Boss, Adventure Time, and Smiling Friends. Two of the four examples I just showed are were created by studios that aren't tied to any big industry companies like Nickelodeon, Disney, Cartoon Network, or anything like that. Companies that give us stale remakes, film sequels, and live action remakes. Ooh. For extra sales and merchandise for more funding that they hardly give to the team that helped them put this production. Yet, there's still a beam of light for the future. Indie animation. Animation that separates itself from mainstream film and TV. This includes film productions, web series, and short films being produced by small independent teams. Some of these films are sometimes solely made by college students. I'm sure we've all been scrolling aimlessly on YouTube one day and found videos of short animations. I'm sure we've watched a few growing up on the early internet of YouTube, or even Newgrounds. Indie animation goes way back. Traditionally, this category includes veteran animators who used to work for larger animation companies, but left due to issues like creative differences to work on their own projects. But I'm going to talk about the current evolution of indie animation, particularly this wide world through the internet. If you were on the internet as much as I was when I was younger, you most likely have seen trailers for up and coming animation pilots or a Kickstarter campaign to get a new series up and running. The amount of talent that is on the internet for people creating their own projects is shocking. With a ton of passion and momentum behind works like Lackadaisy, Monkey Wrench, and Farfetched, to name a few. Shining through the quality of their work, the timing couldn't be better for indie animation to start changing things, edging into Hollywood's turf even. Mostly because the mainstream industry as a whole has been extremely hostile to animation lately. Cancelled projects, tax write-offs, corporate meddling, the recent worker strikes, and jobs being eliminated or cut back to the recent rise of artificial intelligence, or AI. It's difficult for any animator to survive out there, but during this massive slump, many of them are redirecting their focus towards towards working on indie projects for better creative freedom and flexibility. But why is this noticeable just now? What changed? What clicked? To make a formerly niche hobby into an animation industry competitor, is it more popular than what Hollywood is providing these days? And how suitable is indie animation to what we know as now? That's what I'm going to talk about today. Independent animation is a term referred to animated shorts, web series, and feature films produced outside of national animation industries. Most underrated in my view are free on YouTube, like Baked with Love by Rainbot, Puzzle and Sling by Toast Crunch, and Ramshackle by Zebzi. Z Zedzi? Zedzi, I hope I hope I said that right. All examples of, of talented animators sharing their creations with the world, alongside many other independent studios with small budgets, one of the most important things about animation that it is not cheap. If you yourself are thinking of getting a small team to help storyboard, animate, clean up, and voice act, that all costs money, especially to pay for softwares that support animation. It's a long, hard process and it isn't easy. Sure, you could say, I could just do it myself. Voice acting and everything. Animation is a difficult progress for one person, and it's very, very time consuming. Not to mention, I'm an artist myself, and I'm very familiar with animation. I made my own, but hardly finished or published them because it's very time consuming, and it's very hard when you're still a student at school. But that doesn't mean you can't. You can still manage your time to get things like those done if you're very passionate about animation. Take YouTubers like Jaden Animations, The Odd Ones Out, and Jasonmations. People who used to or are in school that have made this their career, but we all have our motivations as well, but it's not that simple. Although we get to keep our characters under our name, and people will recognize that as it is, however, when it comes to working with for big networks like Adult Swim, making characters that you created and wrote only just to be written off by a company that's only going to use their face for merch sales and even more money. If the show gets cancelled, do you get your characters back? Nope. Because they're now legally tied to a big company you can't get them back from. This means no spin-offs, continuation novels, if you're lucky, or anything like that. 
One of the most important knowledge tips that I've learned after seeing so many animators, you do not have to go above and beyond and work for a big, bold company to prove that being an animator is a job or anything like that. Because the industry is not going to see you for your talents. You and your characters are just money makers for them. But that doesn't mean there's no hope. Posting your work on sites like YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram can at least help you gain a little attention on your work and start you off somewhere. Or maybe you don't know how to draw or anything like that, but you're a big fan of animation and art. How can you help small indie projects like these get, get the attention they need? There are many different charities and websites where you can do just that. An underrated one, I think, is Legends Animation, a website that brings small animation projects and helps fund them and makes their animations possible. You can donate to their website now. I'll put the link in the description. Though a common one we all know, Kickstarter, a website that has helped many indie projects become possible. Even popular shows like Bee and Puppycat, Lackadaisy, even Hasbro Hotel, and all have been published to the public through the support of fans of the creator and their talents. Many of these products have merch stores to help raise a little more money and give their fans plushies, t-shirts, and pins of their favorite characters. And you can do the same. Even for how difficult and tiring the processing or the waiting can be, animation is a beautiful talent that brings dreams to life. But working for an industry that blocks that creative freedom because it isn't on brand for them. Take Wish, for example. A film for Disney's 100th anniversary that was completely stripped from its original story and turned into a complete disappointment for a lot of fans. But I can cover that movie in a future video. Maybe. Sure, some indie studios are the same, but doesn't matter if it's in the industry or not. I'll say that indie animation and with the creative freedom of writing has never been more beautifully impactful than now. Stay creative and follow the passions you have for your favorite things, as long as there's nothing dangerous. Either way, hope you enjoyed this. Hoping for a decent grade. But one more information that I couldn't fit in here, then I suggest watching Saber Sparks' video about this topic. He explains it way better than I ever could. But now it's time for a farewell. The tiny voice in your head is mean, but that doesn't mean you should listen to it. Go for the goal. Bye-bye.